Good afternoon, everyone. We're kicking off the eighth session in a very rich conference for two days now that uh, opens a series of very important and timely uh, subjects in depth approach. A system that is undergoing a huge transformation. We would be remiss if we didn't include a table how we as citizens or patients see a different interface and connection with the healthcare system. We're no longer in the paper form of systems. We're no longer in the annual and um, a physical healthcare system. It's a digital one. Of course, this came as a product of a need and it's a product of a culture. For two years, the catalytic influence of the pandemic forced the system to come up with different ways to have a more direct relationship with the citizens, the recipients of healthcare services. The way it did it is through digital transformation. We saw that and it's a benefit that we can recognize that changes the culture of the health system, its relationship with the citizens. Proof thereof is how the vaccination pro program ro was rolled out and evolved. The second proof was the use of our experience from the previous vaccinations, the Spiros Doxiadis program, and we are waiting, eagerly waiting, to see more things in this change. Like, for instance, its systemization, not on behalf of the system, but also the change of our culture as users of these services. So in this framework, we have an exceptional panel. Unfortunately, due to unforeseen um, um, unforeseen uh, situations, we lose someone from the Ministry of Health on uh, digital transformation, but we have three excellent uh, speakers. I will make the introductions, although they're not necessary, with whom we will discuss our relationship in the new image, in the new presence of the healthcare system. Allow me to start with the directly involved parties by inviting Mr. Nikos Veves, for a first um, um, presentation. Uh, I mean, uh, Nikos needs no introduction, but he is the man who is a president of the Greek Patients Association, president and founder of the Greek Patients Association of People Living with HIV Positive Voice. When he speaks, he does not only speak of the patients, he talks about citizens as a whole and their relationship with the health system. So, dear Nikos, in the framework of this change, please enlighten us. Thank you very much, Kostas, for this introduction. It is true that um, representing the Greek Patients Association, our role, the way we see it, is on the one hand to represent and express the needs and the views of the patients. At the same time, we have as our members associations with a horizontal interest in health issues. So we're very much interested at the level of prevention and public health to see how we, representing the citizens, can participate in this dialogue. The second thing that the association wishes is to participate in the drafting of policies and the decision on regarding policies and the evaluation and assessment thereafter of the results of any changes may uh, be implemented and reforms of course we need and are implemented as regards digital health it is clear that in the last years in the digital transformation we've had very fast steps forward in greece we saw them happen and we were pleasantly surprised during our dealing with the covid how we managed to create an inoculation vaccination program that reached the citizens and was accessible by them it was easy to use intuitive it's using reminders and texts and all these things it's something we experienced each and every one of us and we saw how the state can serve and services we saw these in other facilities in the simplifications we effected and implemented in our contact with the state in the simplification of many processes that needed procedures and paperwork and signatures and seals and stamps and everything you can do everything from your smartphone using applications that you can download and install 
all these are things that fill us with optimism. It's something that makes us less optimistic and more reserved is that when we talk when we when we hear about the digital personal health record for six years now what I was thinking on my way here is that uh, the Greek Patients Association was never once invited by a single agency that is designing this notorious now personal health record I, I, I wish, of course, uh, good health to the minister and um, that he may get well soon. And I'm sorry that Mr. Habidis couldn't make it. But we've sent him letters to arrange a meeting with the ministry. Over the phone, what they told me is that they will be very glad in that. So they're looking forward to the collaboration and you are at the epicenter of what we design. But the appointment never came to happen. It never came to pass. And it's, it's up to us to constantly strive and try and remind them that we should um, be granted audience with the ministry. We're not yet at that point uh, where the state should have its own reflexes on and come after us and say, you should join us. Okay, I'm, I'm just mentioning this. Uh, now, please allow me to break protocol and to make the discussion more lively. Now, we had a legislative initiative recently that uh, sets the patient's representation as a substantial um, and uh, well instituted and um, um, legitimized now interlocutor with the state. Where are you at the moment? That's true. That's true. What we're trying to conquer now is to have this recognition at the level of change of culture and mindset, but also at the institutional level. And we have had very significant steps made forward when the minister himself has invited, uh, the prime minister rather himself has invited the Greek Patients Association. Um, um, and he talked about the importance of human centricity. He was not even talking about patient centric system, even in, in, when addressing uh, the Hellenic Parliament. And this uh, transformed, was transformed, and it became reality. It was an article in the uh, law about the personal doctor. There is explicit reference to the fact that in the exceptional cases where the Minister of Health makes uh, sets up um, a committee or policies of health or patients' health, the Minister, uh, by um, uh, virtue of a ministerial decision and in collaboration with the Greek Patients Association and the Greek Handicapped Persons, Federation will look into how the patients may be represented and the disabled people. So we did make steps forward in this more institutional level. If you had to prioritize to prioritize the participation of the patients, where do you think you'd be more useful? Where would you like to participate the most in your capacity? Those of us who are in this field, in this sector, because we've been for a number of years, have been working all our lives. And slowly we acquire skills and knowledge about things that would not go without saying, that would not be self-contained, that a patient would be able to be conducive and help make um, form an opinion. Now, what is important is to combine experiences, the experience of the patient who goes to the hospital trying to make an appointment. All these things that don't take need experience or knowledge or a master's degree. But of course, we would want, when we have the honor and the opportunity to work with all three of you and to learn So we would like to be participating at the level of design as users, uh, but also, as I said, at the, at the level of design and evaluation. How could you see this happen in an organized manner, this discussion or this consultation procedure? How should it be structured? Oftentimes, in, in Greece, most contacts and collaborations are bilateral. The minister will talk with the ESP, will talk with the PEF, with some members of the academia. Um, I mean that there is no multilateral meeting. And when there are committees with the participation of everyone, they simply do not come in session. Everyone is on the list, but the committee is never in session.
So we're not given with this uh, cross-sectoral and multidisciplinary opportunity to have this discussion. So I believe that more efforts should be made in leveraging and utilizing these committees when they exist. But at any rate, in this dialogue that um, if we had a representative from the state, we, the dialogue we would have. We're quite right. Do you believe that this first legislature, legislation rather, needs more details and more normalization or more good intentions and goodwill? Well, what it takes is for one to put one's money where one's mouth is. On my way here, I said, what will be the announcement of the Greek Patients Association um, to the um, um, announcement of the SFEO or the PEF? Both of them fund us. I would, it would be my wish that none of them fund us, that we would receive funding from the state and that we would speak our minds. Okay? What the state must do is to support and finance, fund the Greek Patients Association and uh, to give us um, European programs and projects and everything and come with foundations to have the absolute independence that we have now but for it to be institutioned but if the state wants to be um, an ally uh, to have the Greek Patients Association an ally in terms of medicine and everything they will need to recognize the role and the importance of the Greek Patients Associations and support it now, one last question. Uh, we're still within uh, the time uh, allocated to you. And I have one last question to you, sir. The health system regarding its digital relationship with the users changes everywhere, here, abroad, all over the place. Um, we see reimbursement for intangible technologies like applications, or uh, artificial intelligence and so on and so forth. In this changing system, do you as patients and as a citizen in general, what do you ask from the state? I mean, the, the, the system, the, there is a bit of a, of a reverb uh, from the, sign, uh, the sounds. Uh, can, can we get some um, assistance from technicians? In this changing system, what do you ask from the state? What would you want to see in the system so that it is closer in acknowledging the needs of the patients. What characteristics should it have? Allow me to make a, a correction. It wasn't PIF and the PEF. It was PIF and PEF, not SFE. What we have discovered and ascertained is that we have a huge problem in what we call the healthcare map of the national healthcare system. Every now and then, there are um, um, complaints on behalf of scientific associations that we have shortcomings and deficits in specialties and specializations that are lacking. I'm, I'm talking about the basics. We should sit around a table and see and discuss and measure what happens um, at the level of human resources, what happens at the level of infrastructures that are available, to see how well the personal doctor initiative was designed and what we can all do to make this work. So it's a series of things. Let's start with a couple of them. Thank you for this uh, original introduction. I believe that we lay the foundation for a discussion which I hope you agree with me exceeds the mere coverage of uh, health needs and moves to the level of uh, maintaining uh, general population health. In this framework, the Emeritus Professor of uh, Medicine of Athens, Mr. Tundas, who is also the director of uh, ICP, an institute of social and preventive medicine with a huge contribution in the field of public health. Let us discuss not the issue of digital dealing of a patient's needs, uh, but uh, digital prevention, the way we can maintain the general population health. Can I go to the tribune? Thank you. To the uh, podium, because I've got slides. Good afternoon. 
Let me thank the organizers to be here with you. Dear Kostas Athanasakis, for the kind introduction. And as he already said, I would refer to the new digital environment, how we can develop tools regarding prevention. Let me start, well, generally speaking, because one of the problems we have It is of the three necessary steps, that is, design, materialization, and assessment, we have been implementing only the second, that is, materialization. There is neither planning nor assessment. So we should perhaps go back to basics and say that if we really want to have uh, appropriate operation of health services, any health services, we must study the general population needs see how these needs are transforming needs because they are conscious and non-conscious uh, needs. If one breaks one's leg, it is conscious need to go to the physician. But if one has to go to take a colonoscopy, this is not realized. Uh, so the second step is how all the needs, the real needs, understood, perceived or non-perceived, are expressed in, uh, in demand. And on the other hand, the health system must offer, must supply what uh, is a uh, uh, need in services. These three aspects are interrelated. Needs, that is, demand and supply, and the supplied services, because there is a common ground. And the great, uh, the number four, that is the logos, the, the common place where all the real needs are uh, real needs, because we also have the incited uh, demand. So when all the real needs are covered, the better is uh, the health system. So what would we like to have in an ideal case? We would like to have a health case where all those three circles are overlapping and the space number four to be joined for all three circles. This doesn't happen, but it's important to have this scheme in mind because the greater space number four, the better the health system operating. The smaller the space, the worse the situation as it happens in our country. Let me also say, since I speak of prevention, prevention is one of the three constituents of modern public health. Prevention, promotion of public health, and protection of health are the three constituents. So modern public health includes all three sectors. All these three sectors may be overlapping because one may have a prevention uh, program for pre-screening, but at the same time, you must also educate the population, which is part of health promotion, so as to implement a program. And one must also develop a health protection, which means health and safety in the workplace that we will be promoting such a program. So in many cases, we see that there is common logic for all those three uh, particular pillars of public health. So when we speak of propension, so as to focus there, we speak of a primary, secondary, and tertiary. The first is uh, to take the appropriate measures, wear helmets on the motorcycle, not, uh, uh, not smoking, having physical exercise, and so forth. The secondary is pre-screening and lab tests. And the tertiary prevention might be of uh, the negative impact of uh, chronic disease. One of the problems in our country is that most uh, even the professionals identify and make coincide the primary with secondary prevention. This is one problem. That is why we ignore primary prevention. That's why we are champions uh, in uh, smoking, uh, in obesity, in uh, lack of physical exercise. Now, as far as 
secondary prevention is concerned, we speak of the program Spiros Dexiadis, for instance. And again, it's erroneous notion. Another erroneous perception is that even when we speak of preventive pre-screening tests, we speak under the perspective of the annual checkup. This is also wrong. It's scientifically documented that if we have normal indices in these tests, we do not have to make it at an annual basis. The period is two to three years, depending on, of course, the gender and the history, personal history. And we must have individualized protocols, depending on the profile of each person, that will identify what tests should be affected, depending on the gender, the age, and the family and personal history. So these are two problems that we must, the state must first of all realize because the state organizing these programs. Because what we see currently, we see that the increased number of tests is under the responsibility of the General Secretariat of Primarily Healthcare. And uh, important positive steps were made in cooperation with the Digital uh, Administration uh, Ministry. But in primary prevention, is under the General Secretariat of Public Health. And Madam Epidaki indeed has launched some important initiatives for, against obesity for public awareness on breast cancer, cervical cancer, and so forth. These two causes, however, should not go in parallel. It should be a common policy that will meet on the services offered and the tools used so as to serve the goals both of the primary and secondary care. I do not see this marriage so far, and I hope that we'll be seeing it soon because we really need it. When we speak of primary prevention, we speak of uh, services that cost a lot. Uh, suffice to mention that in 1999, the life expectancy increase was the third longer in Europe. Now we are back on the 15th to the 18th year at rank. The national health system in 1991 had problems as it has currently. What has ha ha changed? The, all these factors have changed. Smoking, bad nutrition, we used to have Mediterranean, now we have fast food, obesity, the lack of physical exercise, the stress that we've been under, under the continuous crisis, repetitive, successive crisis, uh, MOUs, COVID, uh, energy crisis over the last 15 years. So, plus social uh, factors, the change of the environment, the urbanization, the dismantling of the traditional nuclear family. So we must, we do need a very important policy of primary uh, policy, health policy. Now with regard to tests and exams, I show you here a table from one of surveys uh, conducted since, have been conducted since 2006 in general population, which shows the following low rates in the general population on very important uh, uh, tests, uh, blood pressure, 84%, uh, EG, ECG, 7, 74%, cholesterol very low, uh, diabetes again, one out of four don't shake, in DSA it's even less, 22 3%. In uh, tactile exam, only 13.7. Pap test uh, is low, 60 point something. Mammogram, half of women. And uh, palpitation, uh, breast palpitation, again, very low. And we should also include here, and I should have paid heed to that, we should also have colonoscopy. There we have the worst percentages, one out of 10 Greeks above the age of 50 has had one colonoscopy. And if we view the other uh, piles, other columns per social class, we'll see the great difference between the high and lower social class. We have a very critical phenomenon regarding social uh, imbalances in this part of the lacking secondary prevention. So, having in mind what I told you, we organized a program which I would like to show you so as to see an approach that we embarked upon, including uh, taking into consideration all that data. What is the program that has been very successful the last uh, two years? 
that we implemented in the Journalist Fund. It aims at both primary and secondary prevention and the promotion, health promotion. How is it being implemented? First step, everything, all that takes place uh, uh, on the Internet. One can do it whenever one has access in Internet. A, a health questionnaire was first filled in, including all the habits, uh, personal history, the tests are taken, the vaccines has had, lab uh, results, uh, habits, and so forth. The second step, on the basis of this uh, questionnaire, they upload it in a file, prevention file, individual prevention file. An e-file, which is being planned in a way, so it's for when it enters, when we have this e-file, it will be interconnected and be a part of the e-file. The next step is that on the basis of the data recorded from the questionnaire, we have through an algorithm an automated health report uh, drafted, which assesses the uh, condition, the status of health of the participant, and makes comments on the findings, be it on its habits or his stress, the physical examination, the vaccines, or the lab uh, results, and gives directions where there are problems on how to deal with this. And all that can be received on internet as a personal health report. The next step is that this health report, personal health uh, recording report also includes uh, an individualized uh, test protocol that says, depending on the gender, the age, and all that, says what tests should be conducted, uh, on what frequency, and also sends remindings. And when they do it, the file is being renewed and also sends a respective protocol of vaccines, what vaccines should be affected and how often. And again, with reminders, it says each time remind the uh, vaccines. You see here an uh, example, a case study, how we have the recording of the indices. You see one bar shows his own performance. It's in blue, it's normal, it's moving to orange or red. That means that it is uh, on the border or nocive and compares with the general population. There are many graphs because for each uh, rate, be it uh, pressure, cholesterol, diabetes, triglycerides or whatever, there's a respective imaging. And similarly for the nutrition on the base, again, of the questionnaire, sets a score and shows on the pyramid where we have respective performances, where the person lies. The higher the pyramid, the better the performance. And there one can detect where one is found vis-a-vis -vis the general population. You see, unfortunately, that the biggest part of the population is in the red, that is bad nutrition. This effort is being reiterated every two years. That is, now we will be completing the first two years. Now we will send again the questionnaire to the participants to see whether this two years that have gone by on the basis of the indications we've seen, what will be improved or deteriorated, perhaps. So we have this follow-up every two years and reissuance of the report. Of the report. We have a report of the results to date, and the participants always participate in the same questionnaire. Uh, let me say just one thing in what we do in other app, because they haven't been announced as yet. From those that we found uh, pathological uh, labs, one out of three didn't have a clue that they had such a problem. One out of three. You realize, however, what is the contribution of such an effort when of these journalists, one out of three, or connected members of their families, they tell them that you've got a problem with cholesterol or with diabetes, and you should do the following. We don't play the role of the attending uh, physician, but once we identify a problem, we refer him immediately, we encourage him to go 
for to his, uh, to his general practitioner. You realize, however, how all this uh, help in prevention as well, and how prevention should be seen, how we can marry the primary and secondary prevention with health education for the desired effects. So when we implement this program and we saw the general satisfaction, we sent a letter to the 100 bigger companies of Greece and told them, we've got this program and we can offer it to you and you can implement it on your employees, which to our view is useful. Of these 100 companies where we sent the letter, we received, we didn't receive one single positive reply. And this is most telling. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor, for indeed a very innovative approach, if I may. Now, I see opposite the um, traditional stance of society in screening where large parts of the population go to have specific tests at specific intervals, but of course with uh, age brackets and limits and other demographics, we saw an entirely different approach that well, enables and uses, leverages all the advances of technology. We're talking now about a tailor-made, if I may be um, allowed to use this term at the personal level. And I wonder, Professor, if this could be um, um, implemented above and beyond the ever and to be of national coverage and to be implemented nation nationwide. Well, we're struggling, we're trying. You see, I'm responsible in the northern area um, um, rebuilding part. It's, I, I have the uh, part of health under my wings and within the many proposals we have filed for this area, we have included such applications and such tools. But I do not know what the state, because it's the state that needs to make technical bulletins and then um, move forward with procurements and awards, whether they will do that. The Ministry for E-Digital um, um, Transformation has undertaken such initiatives. We have let them know. The two secretaries general with the Ministry of Health are up to date. And I hope that there will be some mobilization on behalf of the competent parties. Well, so do we. And I'm it strikes me as odd that you didn't find any response um, from the 100 largest businesses in Greece. I mean, if this had happened in the United States and someone sent 100 letters to 100 biggest companies, they would receive 150 responses. Well, of course, uh, there the employers um, have different incentives and it's not something we understand here. Apart from the health plans, there are productivity issues as well. Um, an employee who will uh, fall ill, if this can be um, um, prevented, it may not be a, um, a burden today regarding the insurance and the premium and everything, but it ha does have uh, caused a problem with uh, the company's productivity, for instance. Precisely. Well, all these are new tools and new perspectives with which we can rise a level in management and come up with policies that will pertain to the ensemble of health. In this environment, policies are evidence-based. And I believe that we have with us today the most, um, the best specialist, and he's none other than my dear friend Kyriakos Suliotis. So, Kyriakos, you have the floor. No introductions are needed. He is a professor of health policy and he is dean of the School of Social and Political Science at the University of the Peloponnese. He will discuss with us findings, research data that um, will um, um, show the needs and the preferences of the patients in the health care system today. Thank you very much, Kostas. I hope you can hear me. I would like to share some data with you. We had two very interesting presentations by Nikos Dedas and Yanis Tundas. We saw the participation, uh, rightfully so, of the patients and their 
claims, and we saw a very good practice of the research with Elas Health, who for a number of that for a number of years is under the auspices and the wing of Professor Tundas. And this very high quality program that will lead to a personal health record and the prevention health record. We're talking there are some beautiful initiatives, some other steps taken, and really cost us. You're right to point out that these good practices need to be expanded and to cover other sectors, other areas. Please um, forgive me for starting this um, presentation to a reference to Yanis Kiriopoulos. His presence, his absence from this um, uh, conference is more than evident. I have made a personal commitment. So I, I, will, I would like to be allowed to make this personal reference. Now, we talked about the primary health care and the attempt to, um, uh, to, the attempt to make the personal doctor to work. And I close with this uh, picture. I mean, it's a scent of a woman. This is Al Pacino. Um, now, we have with us today someone who can um, be inspired from this and say a lot of things. But the message is one. It takes two to tango. In order to have rational health policies succeed and to design the health policy we want is for the health policy designers to be there but also society, the citizens. We can't have one without the other. We can't have decision making behind closed doors with pressure groups and interest groups who have a right to participate in the dialogue but the one who pays is the citizen through their taxes and contributions. So we shouldn't forget the key principle that health systems are for the citizens. Okay, business is good and um, providers are good and everything, but the key requirements is to listen to what the citizens have to say. Why? Because health is a very complex situation. It starts with the patient and their needs that do not identify themselves with their need very much. Yanis Studer said this very eloquently. And then we have a plexus and a nexus of funding, of reimbursement, of public provision, private provision, mixed provision public funding, private provision, and vice versa, and a system that tries to adapt to a framework that is set there. I mean, you say you have this money to move forward, and this is the money you need to um, uh, be disciplined with, and it's a complex issue. And we've said time and again that in our case, we have some particularities. I shouldn't want to repeat everything. We've already heard about that. And if I, I described the situation to someone who came for the first time in Greece, what are the main problems of the healthcare system? First is underfunding, which came here to stay, unfortunately, after the financial crisis. I have, uh, pr 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 I have uh, proposed the uh, clause that we'll uh, use to amortize such changes depending on the course of the economy. We're talking about new techniques. We're talking about innovation. We're talking about the fourth industrial revolution. We're, it's uh, okay and all right that we are um, actually doing this, but they can't fit in our budgets. The second is the complexity of the framework, in my opinion. And this comes from the great work of the analysis that was um, um, coordinated by Yanis Studers with the participation of many professors from many universities. And it appears that the flow of the money and the um, proposals um, um, situation condition is very complex. How can we simplify it? We showed this. Um, um, we we showed that we can uh, simplify things, and I had some slides that I removed because I was repulsed by them. There was, uh, well, it's, it's not very far the time that uh, we had um, the referrals for tests on uh, little post-its. Um, on I mean, don't think that anyone cleaned those um, whiteboards, and I don't know how much money is spent there. There were many attempts to um, rationalize and streamline this. And I don't want to remind anyone of that because we've done digital leaps. From from 2010 till today, the digital environment is different. It's the difference between day and night. And we need to recognize, acknowledge this, and feel proud, those of us who participated in this. I don't want to share with you data from the past. I want us to move to the recent results from the studies that run every year to see what the citizens say and to propose that what citizens say should be routine, to be routinely recorded, so that the central government knows what obstacles are met by the patients when they try to access the healthcare system and what the possible alternatives for their resolution is. Costas talked about preference. Yes, preferences need to be respected as well. Also, in Mediterranean countries, it has been found, it has been d documented scientifically that the sense of the freedom of choice is much more important than it may be for Central European countries or the European North. This is something that needs to be taken into consideration as well, in view of the implementation 
of the institution of personal doctor. I don't know whether you can see this clearly. I will say things fast to have more time for further comments, commentary. Citizens use health services uh, in great um, um, rates. Um, health care enters every home. It's a very demanding policy. I mean, 75 to 80 percent systematically uses health services. So it's a field of public policy that is of everyone's concern. You will see that what is also anticipated over time since 2017 and today is that this is the first point of contact. The first pathway, the one that the state is called upon to regulate, visit the doctor, diagnostic tests and everything follows. If this is regulated, about which we're shouting um, till we're blue um, for years, um, there will be a domino effect and we'll see improvement in many operations of the healthcare system further. But there is a problem. In a country that pays 4 to 4.5 billion from taxes and contributions and approximately 5 billion privately for health, the citizens, one in three citizens, has obstacles to access healthcare system due to cost. I mean, one would say that such an extensive network of public uh, infrastructures can't cover the needs and the demand of those people who can't support themselves financially. We need to look into that. There may be organizational or other issues. The lack of standardization. Standardization without the users you can't have. We don't have a standardized pathway to the healthcare system. Two patients with the same health problem that either belong in a different socioeconomic category or live in a different area of Greece follow entirely different pathways. I'm talk not talking about geographical, I'm talking about procedural of access to the healthcare system. This causes squandering, dislike, discontent, and problems. Um, biggest problem is um, a medical visit. We do have the pandemic period with it and we take into consideration. We have lab tests. Things are better. Do you know what's different? Because they're both primary healthcare. That in the latter, we have all the available private sector participating and in the first, we have um, um, a selective procedure. So what's the message? Well, the Medical Association of Greece says it. It does not say it, of course, respecting all the limitations. Everyone says that we need to be in the um, social security, but without a clawback budget, which means deficits, a boom in the budget and the system to relive realities that uh, remain in the past and should remain there. Yes, we should include many doctors in the system. We have the privilege of having many doctors, but keeping the budgets as a priority. You know, I have an opinion um, that I have been repeating is that I don't think it's a curse that the system is producing uh, more doctors. I mean, we would, if we had a system, we would only get the best doctors. We don't have meritocracy. We don't have evaluation. And we don't uh, put to good use this overproduction uh, benefit we have. And the mission of the healthcare system is not to offer income to all those who work professionally in the healthcare system. It is to offer an answer through medical care to those who have needs. Things are much better in, in drugs. We have a huge network of pharmacies easily accessible of the country. And hospitalization, there is limited demand. The problems appear to be manageable. We may have problems here that have to do with time rather than with financial adversities. A large percentage of the citizens pay money to have access and we have counted how much money we have measured whether the Social Security Agency participates or not, or whether they go out of pocket. Uh, in terms of uh, drugs, they um, go over and um, above and beyond every system <coughs> because the drugs are cheap. And the balance that I go directly to the drug, the pharmacy and pay it is cheaper than to exercise my insurance um, uh, rights. So we do understand the distortion there and the dangers that lie therein. Are you willing to pay money for uh, health services. One in three says that they do have the intention to pay money out of pocket uh, for the access to the healthcare system. And if you take this one out of three and project it into the healthcare budget, you will see this oxymoron, this conundrum. Private insurance has not managed to absorb even the willingness to pay because these people pay privately they cover the need um, from the money under the mattress. And this is an issue because it causes uncertainty, because the advantage of private insurance, I would never uh, compare it against Social Security, it would be wrong. It goes against private payment. Why can't the private insurance market, I don't know whether we have any representatives of the private insurance market to absorb out of this five billion one billion. It would give much more certainty and financial security to the citizens, and I want to put a pin on it. 
There is a certain disgruntlement, disappointment, but it's the nature of the service is such that it's natural to create um, negative emotions. I mean, in, if instead of the healthcare system we had tourism, it would be 90% if in view you, if you are disappointed and disgruntled because you're happy. But I, I don't pay that much attention to that. I pay attention to the fact that they people are familiar with the need to change radically the system and there is no better ally to this reform than the possibilities and capabilities given to us by modern technology. We've seen our, how our lives became easier with the um, e-prescription and the intangible prescription. These were not a given 10 years ago. Intangible transcription during um, prescription during the pandemic and the vaccines. This is where we need to build the healthcare system of the future, but by utilizing research findings and by utilizing the choices and the needs of the citizens. The citizens appear to be split the bit we are on the fence. Um, uh, on that they may have a bad experience from some transformations that have to do with them in the area of taxes for instance but this is understandable as well it may be explained the biggest obstacle the biggest hurdle and i mentioned it in the table we had with uh, the alternate minister the former sg of the primary health care and the professor emeritus and former minister of social security, Mr. Tanos Tasos Yanitsis, we raised the issue of consent and consensus. And he said that, well, in some cases, we did see consent into doing nothing. Everyone agrees from different point of views and political starting points that uh, what we received, we will pass on to the next one and we'll uh, carry on. And this is most irritating, infuriating, I would say. Citizens suggest that we dare to change. And you see, Mr. Um, um, Anis, that we have the personal doctor, the private doctor, the family doctor, we call it what it may, it's the same role. So what's the best timing to implement such an emblematic reform than the one we have now when the citizens appear to support this choice? And we need to be careful. Now, the big obstacle, we're measuring institutional trust and the social capital we have, the political parties in last place and politicians, those who plan and implement um, the reforms, and finally, mass media. Now, in these conditions, you understand how much needs to be made, dear Nikos, to overcome those hurdles that have been established as stereotypes in Greek society. I'm, I don't say whether they hold water or they're true or not, but it, they are recorded. Evidence-based health policy is what Costa says. I will reiterate it time and again. What is it? It's to measure, to evaluate, assess, and base ourselves on evidence when the evidence leads somewhere. The rationality and the correctness of a choice are indisputable, so you can support your reforms. We call it democracy in health for a decade when we tried to measure it. We did measure it. We proposed specific processes. Nikos will allow me to suggest two categories of interventions at a local level and the level of the country because we need to discuss that as well and to say because it, it, this... Uh, recent legislative initiative was already mentioned. I embrace it, I support it, I shout for it, but it appears a bit uh, undaring that by virtue of a decision of the minister, the representatives of the patients may be recognized. No, it should not be may because they may not acknowledge them, okay? May means it may or may not. So I, I, I'm, I, I like detail in when we're using language. So I think that it, it's a, it's a, it's a stingy, if I may say so. It, it, it's unfair to the initiative of the government. There was an initiative like that in Cyprus seven years ago, but it is innovative, and it was mentioned. This is where we must build the next um, decision-making process on with patient representatives in all bodies, in the board of directors of ELF or the. Um, um, uh, or whatever. I was in for a year in the board of directors of the AOP and the most useful member was a representative of the patients because he came with a clear agenda and he attended all the meetings and this is something we need to diffuse, we need to spread. We have the patients associations, they have made huge leaps forward and the patients of association, the Greek patients associations are very well trained. So what does the state need to do is to ask for the representation to be set from the bottom down, not to go and find the chosen person who may also be a representative of the patients and appoint them in some agencies to ask from the Greek patients associations and elsewhere to appoint representatives in all decision-making bodies. Empirically speaking, when we have patients' association representatives and decision-making bodies represented, 
the requests they make are more responsible and more mature because they take into consideration the other side as well. They're not maximalist. Okay, we don't need everything and we need it now without any limitations. We don't have such demands. When you're outside the whole shebang, you have the right to say anything you want. But when you're in it, it's more responsible. And we've seen similar um, initiatives in other countries. And the healthcare systems cover everyone, but not for everything. Why? Because there are limitations in place. This is our proposal for a new funding project that would allow us to um, produce innovations in a standardized way. And in the flow of money, you know, when it's delayed, the people who represent companies know this very well, uh, problems are created and inflation pressures are exerted because the flow of money is delayed even when it exists. So we need to take steps into simplifying this process. And let me remind you the traditional way of taking a proposal, you got the problem, you see the cost benefit, and finally you decide. If we introduce this culture into the decision-making system, we can see, I believe, in the most characteristic way, the role of the patients in this step-by-step -step way of decision-making. I will once again remind you this phrase, you can't manage what you can't measure. It was W. Edwards Denning, technology allows us to measure things. We're in a culture of measuring and counting data, utilizing data. And let me remind you, a few years ago, we were going uh, circa, approximately, debts, expenditure, funding, everything was um, a ballpark figure. Now, we need, I'm, I'm more of an optimist, okay, if we can introduce this um, funding amortization or um, suspension shock, uh, uh, we'll move forward, okay. We have the status ally, technology is rampant, uh, right now we're discussing how we can fit into our budgets things, there are millions of things happening there, Maria Gazul talked to us about the use of AI, its implementations are infinite. And they can be our ally to have direct input from the users, from the citizens, and transform this into knowledge, into data, and to um, document our decisions. With uh, these few words, I would like to thank you for your attention. We warmly thank Mr. Suryautis for this excellent presentation. Allow me to point out two things in your presentation. We warmly thank you. And we, uh, on the issue of the participation of uh, patients' association in the decision-making process, the experience so far has really, uh, is really a, an issue of substance. It has produced uh, results to the right direction. An impressive finding from what you saw is that one third of the interviewees declares a willing of a private payment uh, for better services a priori. We won't find it anywhere in Europe, but it's definitely a preference. I don't know what you believe about that. I wonder whether it's not uh, merely a preference, but uh, an embedded uh, preference vis-a-vis -vis health services. Allow me, however, to say that there is time for some questions from the audience. And please ask for the roaming microphone for questions. I cannot resist uh, the temptation to ask you how you view this reform in primary health uh, service to affect uh, the demand, uh, the overall attitude vis-a-vis -vis health services. Well, I'd be using the, exa the exact uh, notion. It is an embedded preference. The citizens are familiarized with paying for health services. This would not be bad unless that expenditure would be a, a, a real option vis-a-vis -vis the disposable income. Some people want their kids in private school. If they do that consciously because they can afford it, it's okay. The problem is that in health sector, due to the fact that one has to pay in order to cover a need, has no, the, not the necessary means for the life, for, for the daily lives. Yes, it is something embedded, and it is something through time. That's why I, I showed 
studies of five years uh, because I wanted to avoid the snapshot. One might say that it's the MOU, the, war, the crisis or whatever, but this is not the case. I believe that the <clears throat> onset of uh, the implementation of uh, this uh, institution of the family doctor, it, it's beyond the issue of it's an I- iconic uh, promise of all uh, governments. It is because, indeed, it will set uh, healthy rules for the system for all, and this allows for the existence of some points of reference in the health system so as to have prevention operating. Someone will have the accountability, if you like, will be responsible to tell uh, a citizen that one must go to have colonoscopy. Nobody knows it. Someone, for the time being, nobody will refer me to that. And without having the follow-up whether a specific test has been done and how often it should be done. So we lack this. It takes two to tango. Yes, that's true. We need someone who will assume the responsibility because we'll be saying that in the university. It's the health system that must go to the citizen and not to wait for the citizen to come forward. Now, that's the point. Now, whether it will succeed, there's a lot of uh, tiny details. We need two to tango, but I would also need good physicians satisfied in their remuneration, a system that will will, uh, reward the good outcomes. That is, if we have an improvement in indices, that should reflect uh, on the remuneration of the physicians. So as to offer incentives to all sides. It takes time. That's true. All reforms uh, take time. AOP that now one doubts now it's uh, uh, very raison d'être dealt with huge difficulties at the beginning. I believe that we might make a and we might need, of course, uh, interventions uh, and improvements. They all need that. But this uh, need will be covered to a large extent. And at the end of the day, let us give the option of uh, free access. And if we do not want to use it, that's another issue. The point is that we do have that uh, option. Well, this term with Tango, yes, you have really secured that. Any questions from the audience? Yes, Mr. Apostolidis. Very well, uh, Apostle. Now, regarding the program Spiros Doxiadis, do we have any indication or data of uh, acceptance of this program and uh, use of these services from the uh, target groups you refer? Anybody who has data and can comment on that? The only elements that we do know are the issues regarding the enrollment in the list of uh, family doctors. This is the only registry that is in operation, that is this process. And they are are quite uh, encouraging uh, results. Half of the population is already integrated in this list. But it will be difficult, to my view, to complete this process because we need more physicians to participate who currently do not seem willing to cover this need. And we also have problems which I imagine the last uh, session will be elaborating. We've got with us the professor, Mr. Leonis, who is the the greatest expert on those matters, which, to my view, One might tell that, as Kyriakos has said, this is a positive aspect. That is a history of the personal, of the family doctor. This is important because that puts, uh, activates uh, the e-file at last. But we should not coincide the personal doctor and e-file with the notion of primary health care. This is a far more broadened strategy, including many of what has already been mentioned. Would someone like to add something? No, not at this stage. Well, I believe, however, that uh, 
quite a positive aspect is the statement of the Secretary General, as we've heard it the other day in an event, on monitoring the system. That is, we've heard with great joy that the political leadership aims at monitoring the implementation of the system on the basis of certain indices. And let us not fool ourselves. No major health reform can move ahead unless it is being accompanied by figures, facts and figures vis-a-vis -vis implementation. Well, obviously, this goes, all these go hand in hand. But let me, however, open the parenthesis or, if you like, uh, point out here. I don't like the the, the the word transparency, but we don't have really access to the data. We should be also able to assess. We have a very rigid system. At last, we did some kind of, uh, uh, we overcame certain things, and we have the culture of measuring. But do you know how much, what the richness of data exists there? We do this work uh, gratis in the universities. We assign um, exercise in the universities for the students to make studies, to be offered to the central administration. This is something with huge potential and which is trapped somewhere. We must do something about it. And what Kiriakos just said, I want to remind you that our country has currently two major and most valuable data banks. The one is e-prescription and the other is the BIA system, business intelligence system where we register there on daily basis all the actions of the health units in the national health system. Both these data banks are completely untapped, unexploited from the viewpoint of study, assessment, and useful conclusions drawing, because the ministry does not have that know-how of the academia, of the scientists, to do such kind of work. This can be done by the academia, research centers, and so forth. So instead of the state asking the assistance of the very few of us in Greece involved in these matters to really get hands-on on this work and draw a conclusion on what happens, they remain there, they get amassed, and we are just happy because they are recorded. But the goal is not recording, per se, it's the exploitation. How long haven't we been uh, answered? I think it's more than a year. Yes, precisely. We should view beyond the law. So beyond the law, let me address an open question, a rhetoric question. To what extent the Greek society can hold the cost out of the privatization of a potentially public commodity? Now it's not produced, therefore there is a cost of opportunity. Would someone like to add something? I didn't hear. I, I, you lost me somewhere. Stand, uh, tolerate the cost, which cost? Well, knowledge, knowledge can be produced out of that data, but knowledge is a public commodity, not allowing access to that data. Actually, this public commodity is not being produced, therefore we've got a huge cost for the society. It's only when you have to hide something. We want to, uh, I don't know. This is one of the queries and the demands. Uh, a question submitted by our association in Greece. Uh, in a round table in Delphi, we had also invited Mr. Habidis and Mr. Kotsiopoulos. This concerned the secondary use of data. All the initiatives that we know in Europe these are data of the patients beyond other, perhaps, uh, actions that BI read records. The overall information, anonymous and so forth, should be public. We should know as taxpayers, taxpayers where is our money spent? If in this uh, hall, ask the people, where do they believe that there's a waste in health? We might have 30 different views. No one can advocate, can sustain and support any view, but no one can, if you like, uh, offer arguments for one's position. There's no facts and figures. I can't understand. It is, I, I believe that this, because this is due to inertia. It's not an issue of expediency.
I would say that the main problem is that we've got a culture in our country in each uh, public center that considers that should not cooperate with agencies outside its public sector stricto sensu. There is such a culture. We'll see that it's, uh, it's uh, dispersed. It's uh, everywhere. For the time being, we don't have the political will to do away with all that. Well, anyway, if there have been references from those structures, there wouldn't be any problem, but they are not produced. That's a problem. They do not produce the conclusions that do not let others produce them. Well, I believe that the central message of this uh, session was produced unequivocally. It is crystal clear vis-a-vis -vis what we should do in our country so as to use sufficiently the tools and uh, the ammunition those tools offer. We warmly thank uh, the speakers and you for the presence. And uh, let us have a lunch break.